continuing on from that, obviously got an update courtesy of the Diddy stuff. You know I'm obviously obsessed with this, as are most people online. Um, I'm still mulling over the idea in my head, why is it not possible for people like Diddy, who are that freaky, to do it with consenting adults? Why isn't it possible to be that freaky, hedonistic, crazy dude without it going into kind of, you know, illegal activities, without it harming people, without it destroying people, without you becoming a megalomaniac, a psychopath, an abuser, a harasser, a graper? Like, why is it not possible to do that? Because I'm sure that lifestyle of people, or I'm sure those people who kind of abide by that lifestyle do exist. I'm sure Diddy's not the only one. There's many of those people who kind of like to dabble in the dark arts. If that's the case, what do you do? Do you only really hang around with people like yourselves who are into that dark art type of shit? Um, but then that isn't fun, really, because you want to meet new people and kind of gain new experiences and whatever it may be. Um, how do you do it? Do you, do you just do it with a closed knit group? Do you do it very hush hush behind closed doors? Like, or do you just not do it and try to live a what you know, <laughs> try to live a good life or try to be a, a a decent person, right? Give your life to Christ, go to the church, you know, whatever maybe. Which obviously is not possible. Someone like you know, did he's probably been corrupted from early, but that's what I was just thinking about when I heard it because I'm sure there were plenty of people in the industry who are probably sweating buckets now, sweating absolute buckets that Diddy's going down because they know they also partook in or, you know, or, or were still partaking when he got arrested in a lot of the fucking stuff that Diddy was doing. I'm sure that was the case. The other thing that I was thinking that was really heartbreaking for me as a music fan was the fact that a lot of these things that we're hearing, the, especially the new stuff that we've seen um, highlighted in the case that Little Rodney put out, these are all things that happened quite recently in the last, what, 18 months, if not a couple of years. This isn't like stuff that he did in like the 80s or the 90s, or the early 2000s. No, this is stuff that he did recently. So recently, Little Rod is one of the people who was credited for kind of crafting or hoping to craft the sound of the Love Album. The Love Album by Diddy might have been one of his best albums of all time and may have been one of the albums of the year for me. And now it's hard to listen to the album now, knowing all the fuck shit Diddy's been up to over the entire time that he's been about. That's the really heartbreaking thing about this situation. But another thing that it proves that I've said plenty of time here on the pod is that unfortunately, for whatever reason, the most deplorable, you know, morally bankrupt, horrendous people are also the ones that create the best art. That's the sad reality of life. The worst people sometimes create the best art and sometimes the worst situation is for you personally is usually the time when you step up and you actually you know put out some of your best work also that's why that meme of like you know a rap said rapper broke up with their girlfriend oh they're gonna drop the hardest record ever they're gonna drop the hardest tape ever that's why that meme is actually somewhat true because a lot of people kind of you know funnel their emotions through their music anyway consciously or subconsciously so you can only imagine why Diddy's music was hitting so much the way it was back in the day, or even nowadays, why we used to groove to it, why we used to also feel so sexy, why we all wanted to kind of dance and we all wanted to be merry. It was because this guy was out here, you know, doing coke every day, molly, drinking champagne in the bathroom, smashing, you know, loads of women. Unfortunately, some of them are let to be underage. Like, it's no surprise the music was what it was because he was living his raps. It's just really, really bad that he's living his raps and he was also doing some sick shit. So let's see this uh, current update, um, courtesy of The Independent. Here are all the allegations made against Diddy. Just to quickly go through what the allegations are and where it stands at the moment. All the allegations against Diddy Combs. We've got Cassie Ventura, which is the first one, right? That domino, when that domino fell, I feel like that was the beginning of the end. Maybe Diddy knew too. That's probably why he was moving so silent not really saying too much apart from some social media posts and shit he was kind of keeping his counsel i think once cassie came out the woodwork i think that's when it was a wrap my theory on the cassie thing is also this i think i've not mentioned this here before but um i think cassie was okay to be quiet and kind of quote unquote keep diddy's secret but i think diddy started to act a little bit too you know big for his boots he started to be a little bit too cocky and i remember there was a period that i remember seeing on social where I think he was liking her post or leaving a comment. He did something a bit cheeky. And then um, Cassie's new, or Cassie's husband nowadays, 
I forgot his name. Um, he basically clapped back super hard and very aggressively in the comments. And of course, did he never send nothing back? Um, I think he basically said that, hey, don't talk to my wife or something like that, you piece of shit. I don't know, whatever. He said something along those kind of lines. And obviously it ended very quickly. But I wonder if that was the reason or the trigger for Cassius to say, okay, enough's enough. I'm going to bury this guy. Because he started to feel like the coast was clear. He started to get way too comfortable. And, you know, it was an opportunity to kind of strike and obviously catch him a bit off guard. Um, it continues. Um, Rodney L. Sorry, R Rodney Little Rod Jones. This is the guy that is really kind of laying it thick because he was with Diddy, um, you know, helping him construct the, the Love album. So a lot of the information he's been able to provide is incredibly recent. Is as recent as just a few months ago. So let's read this bit of the article. It says, in the most recent lawsuit against Combs filed on 26th of February, 2024, um, Rodney um, Little Rod Jones alleged that he was subjected to unwanted advances by associates of Diddy um, at his discretion, at his direction, sorry, and that he was forced to engage in relations with sex workers to Combs had hired. Jesus. The producer who worked for Combs between September 2022 and November 2023 claimed that Combs sexually harassed, drugged, and threatened to him more than for more than a year. You know what's funny about this? Doesn't Diddy also sound a bit like Steven Crowder? That's what it sounds like. I'm just thinking about it now. I was thinking, raw wow, like th th this is giving Steven Crowder, isn't it? Um, he said he has, if, if Steven Crowder liked black people, he probably might be at some of his Diddy parties as well. He said he had, allegedly, he said he had a uh, he said he has video and audio evidence of Combs, his staff, and others engaging in serious logical activity. The lawsuit also alleges that Combs regularly hosted sex trafficking parties. Yo, Diddy is a sick, horny guy, bro. With underage women and illegal drugs and implies record label executives who look the other way financially benefit from access to celebrities and dignitaries, including British royal Prince Harry. Having read that, though, I wonder if that's going to happen in the prison, where they're going to start selling chairs. Um, I also wonder if, like, when it happens in prison, if, like, you know, that you have to start beating guys in there because he just gets bored and he wants to relive his glory years. I wonder what happened inside the actual prison and if that shit will actually get out. Like, if he ends up beating some random dude, will that, will that shit actually get out or will we just not hear about it until he gets released or something? That would be flipping wild if that happens. It continues, says Prince Harry is not accused of any wrongdoing and he attended the parties himself. Combs' attorney told Los Angeles Times that the lawsuit contains reckless name-dropping about events that are pure fiction. We've got another person here called Joy Dickerson Neal. In 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal filed a lawsuit against Combs, drugged her, sexually assaulted her, and secretly recorded assault while she was in college with 1999. That, was, that is one of the sick ones, by the way. That is one of the sick ones. That did your guy his way to drug somebody. Like, you know... That is a real sick one. To drug somebody and take advantage of them while they're actually drugging and record them and shit. That's some wild shit. I think I actually heard or I read a bit on Twitter from somebody associated with the kind of case that allegedly, you know, he kept all the fucking cards and shit. That's fucking wild. Or oh, sorry, allegedly that all the rooms in the house had hidden cameras. Every single one. Fucking wild. More women come forward. We've got anonymous plaintiff as well in the fucking lawsuit. Anonymous in, in November, anonymous plaintiff accused Combs and singer Aaron Hall of raping her and a friend in 1999-1991 after meeting at, at the MCA Records event in New York City um, where the singers were very flirtatious and handsy and offered them drinks. The suit alleges that Combs and Hill, uh, Hall sorry, invited the woman to Hall's apartment for an after party where the plaintiff was of more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs while barging to the room pinned her down and forced Jane Doe to have sex with him. Jesus Christ, bro. Even though this stuff was in the 1990s, like, this is really damning. Really, 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 really damning. After she spoke to her friend, um, the plaintiff allegedly found out that she had also been forced to have sex with Combs and Hall in another room, according to her suit. A few days later, Combs allegedly visited the plaintiff and her friend at her home where they were staying and where he became irate and began assaulting and choking Jane Doe to the point she passed out. Jesus Christ, yo, Diddy is on some absolute wild ball time. So, obviously, it's going, you know, it's very hot for him on the streets out here. Things aren't going the greatest, and he's probably feeling the heat. But the most interesting thing to come out of this, the most interesting thing for me to come out of this, has been this update, which I'm going to show you now, which is courtesy of Mobs World, which features Young Miami, one half of the City Girls. 
So in this updated amended lawsuit from Little Rod, um, who's obviously suing Diddy, he also included some other details such as this, which says Young, yeah, Young Miami is accused of transporting pink cocaine for Diddy. So Young Miami is on that 2C vibe, right? You, if you know about 2C, you, if you know, you know about 2C. Young Miami is, is being accused of transporting pink cocaine known as the streets as 2C for Diddy in an amended lawsuit filed by Rod, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones. So let's actually check that. I want to check that video. Let's actually check the video. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But this video is one of the most legendary videos I remember watching back in the day. It's a Vice video on the popularity of 2C, which essentially is 2CB, um, but it's, it's got, you know, colouring in it to make it pink and the sprinkling of cocaine on it and I think ketamine or MDMA to give it that kick. But essentially it's just 2CB. And um, there was this really cool little documentary that I remember watching on Vice that did a good job of kind of telling the story of 2C and why it was so popular. Um, especially within the kind of you know the clubbing culture and shit so let me get up for you now so you can kind of hear it especially if you're watching listening through the audio side if you're watching you'll definitely see this video or you, you definitely have seen it probably it's from a year ago um it's a really good one i'll play a bit for you now so you can kind of get a vibe of what i'm talking about here but it's really good it's called the pink was it the pink cocaine wave or something what's the title of it called as it kind of loads up on here on the screen but with me a sec yeah it's called the pink cocaine wave high society curse your vice so let me get this back to the yeah. and then we can 2cb is taking over colombia and the word is that cartels here are expanding to europe they've set up labs in spain so if you haven't seen it already expect to see it in ibiza this season well no Although it is pink, it most certainly isn't cocaine. In fact, very few people who take this drug have any idea what's really in it. So I don't think it's that bad in the UK. In the UK, I think for the most part, if they're selling you 2CB or 2C, they're definitely trying to sell you 2CB. They're not going to try and sell you some other shit. I think over there, it's a bit different, you know? From what I remember of this video, I think they just mix everything and put it all in one pot and just give it a pink food colouring. And then, you know, shut it out there. So it's a bit crazy to be sniffing all that shit at once. But in the UK, for the most part, if you have it, it's definitely going to just be regular 2CB with a bit of food colouring in it. But again, I could be wrong. The Thank confusing you. thing is that the word 2CB is kind of like a Latinization of 2CB, a psychedelic phenethylamine invented by Alexander Shulgin in the 1970s that feels a bit like LSD mixed with MDMA, lasts two to three hours, and was famously referenced on the Kanye track, Yikes. But in Colombia, 95% of samples have shown that 2CB here contains no 2CB. Wow. So it's kind of just like, what is this drug? <laughs> to try to find out, we're gonna go hang out with some people who actually use it. Kim Zuluaga is kind of a trans icon in Colombia, and her and her so-called butterflies have a huge social media following. They're also guaracha DJs, and guaracha is this kind of psychedelic reggaeton style music that's heavily influenced by 2CB. Sometimes you go to parties and they just look like the drugs that people take in it. I'm not sure if you've been to some, but sometimes you go to a rave and it looks like the type of drug that you people take there. It's like if you go to like a, a dub night, right? If you go to like a dub night, you can kind of tell what everyone's kind of on based on the music and based on what they look like. And I think uh, this particular music they're talking about is definitely very 2C uh, coded. <laughs> When you consume tusi y está en una fiesta de guaracha o escucha guaracha, los sonidos de la guaracha están diseñados para que cuando uno esté drogado con el tusi, la mente alucine y sienta como muchas más sensaciones. Creo que es como una combinación de muchas drogas sintéticas en polvo. Pero pues en sí, en sí, no sabemos. Es una buena cosa que no saben lo que está en ahí. I don't know about you, but I think sometimes ignorance is bliss. You probably shouldn't know what's in there. If you do, you might not ever want to take it again. It's probably good that you don't, that you don't know. Just leave it like that. <laughs> y el tusi te da sensaciones mejores que la coca. La coca está pasada de moda porque el tusi te hace sentir feliz. Plus, I imagine it's just cheaper, even if in Colombia, right? Because I'm imagining Colombia would 
you know, the cost of living over there, most likely cocaine is way cheaper than it is over in the UK, especially considering that it comes from there. But I'm assuming even if it is, you know, the equivalent of like $10 over there, it's still probably quite expensive for a, a Colombian person to buy. So most likely they do this type of things, obviously to kind of, you know, give the drug market a bit of a kick because probably all the kids are bored of the stuff that they're selling them. But also because it's probably way cheaper than fucking whatever drugs they usually sell there. That's probably the reason why you'd imagine, um, you know, what you call it, drug dealers trying to be entrepreneurs and trying to find new kind of what they call them in business, um, verticals, right? Um, just trying to like increase um, their ability to make money. And, you know, people like new shiny things, give it a good, give it a cool name, cool marketing, branding, etc. And Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt. La mayoría de los jóvenes se están inclinando más por el Tusi. Oh, I thought that was makeup. I thought that was makeup, that big heavy bag. Hace parte de nosotras antes de salir, pues nos gusta darnos unos cuantos pasecitos. Several lines. I love these trans icons. This is something that I don't do anymore, to be fair. If I am going to get on it, I try to get on it when I go to the place that I'm at and then start from there. Um, I do even the same thing with drinks. Like the, the, the era or the days of me doing pre-drinks has completely gone. Like I used to have, like even with friends, you'd have like proper serious pre-drink sessions where you'd get on it for real. You'd order drinks, you'd get a load of drugs, you'd be going crazy, almost like a little mini party before you get to the party. Nowadays, I can't handle it. If I go to a rave, I'm just going to go to a rave and kind of enjoy the stuff when I get there. Um, but in general, anyway, just in terms of enjoying the party, because, you know, I'm a bit of a chin striker and a fucking wannabe DJ and shit. So when I'm going to these places, unfortunately, I want those losers in the corner trying to sneak Alicia Shazam tunes and, you know, peer over the booth and see what the DJ is playing and shit. So for all that stuff, I'm not really, you know, there to get like monged out and go crazy, even though that's a good thing. Um, I'm there mostly to kind of enjoy the music. So if that's the case, you start when you get there and then you go from there. But several lines to get in the mood is fucking hilarious. Several. That's like, when, when I hear several, I hear more than seven. That's what I'm trying to get there. Pull it out, get a little nice little bump there, up the nostrils. There you go. Get it? You want uh, no, gracias. How does the TCB? Imagine asking the presenter of this documentary if he wants to do some drugs on camera. It reminds me of that iconic clip of, um, what's his face? Oh, I forgot his flipping name. Little Keith's younger brother. When he's when he asks that guy if he wants a perk, it reminds me of that kind of iconic clip. RP. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you get the gist. You get the gist of 2C. You get the absolute gist of 2C. Anyway, going back to this video or this kind of lawsuit updated courtesy of little brother features young miami she's now being detailed as a as like a alleged smuggler of pink cocaine for diddy which is wild isn't it um he's he's almost a bit fortunate too diddy that he's able to be this older dude in hip-hop this elder statesman who's able to kind of attract this you know young hot thing in young miami but also somebody that clearly is about that lifestyle he must have struck the lottery. Sorry, lottery. He must have struck the lottery when it comes to Young Miami. He met some new girl in the scene, and she's with all the fuck shit that he's he's on. She immediately jumped in, you know, feet first, um, straight in at the fucking deep end. She was ready to go from the beginning. As soon as she met him, hey, fly me out, buy me things. But I also am with the freak offs. I'm also with all the drugs allegedly. Like, let's go. So this is what it's alleging in this current um, updated what you call it lawsuit here, courtesy of Mobs. So let's read a bit of it here. Um, let's see what it actually says regarding the stuff that little little um, what you call it, young man was involved in. So this is the article. It's a young Miami is being accused of transporting pink cocaine known as on the streets as Tusi for Diddy in the amended lawsuit filed by Little Rod. On Monday 25th, Little Rod amended the lawsuit filed against Diddy in February. He added additional 25 pages of information to the lengthy filing according to the court documents obtained by XXL. In the updated suit, Little Rod goes into more detail about Diddy's alleged love of pink cocaine, a combination of ecstasy and cocaine that the mogul um, would allegedly procure from his accused drug mule, Brendan Paul. 
plaintiff Mr. Combs Enterprise were rehousing um, for the something in the West of all in Virginia. The court filing reads, Mr. Plaintiff Jones personally witnessed Mr. Combs do a few lines of coke in his dressing room. Um, defendant Sean Combs wanted to see, but Brendan forgot it. So defendant Christian Coram called Young Miami, who then brought it on the plane with them. Private jet. Young Miami is transporting coke on a private jet. Um, Diddy was um, previously denied the allegations in Little Rod's initial lawsuit. Exit Salvatore. She, she got the call, jumped on the jet delivered it obviously this is the details here as you can see here courtesy of the lawsuit as well so crazy update again more proof that diddy was really on that rockstar party boy shit and then unfortunately that's when all the other legalities also took place and then the other update on this as well is that young miami is now being referred to as a sex worker in this updated lawsuit which is fucking wild to think that right but this is what it says in the updated lawsuit it says, upon further information, belief, defendant Lucian Charles Grange, which is funny that he's mentioned there because isn't he the new husband of like, what's her face? Um, Christina Ritchie or something, right? In his capacity as CEO of UMG, authorized Motown Records and Universal Music Group to provide financial resources to defendant Sean Combs and Love Records for a wire transfer to defendant Sean Combs and accountant Robin Greenhill. Are they alleging that somehow Lucian Grange pay diddy to buy drugs or just that he gave him money that would then be used to buy drugs i don't know anyway the highlight section upon information and belief mrs Gr miss greenhill ensued ensured sorry the wire fund transfer or cash payment to sex workers <laughs> were completed yo you got the record label hiring fucking prozies for you defendant christian corum through her direct reports frankie santella Moy Buan and Brendan Paul would negotiate fees the sex workers received and would ensure the workers were paid one of a manners bit manners detailed above. According to Plaintiff Jones, defendant Sean Combs bragged about having several women on a monthly stipend. So Diddy was out here. I don't know sure if that counts as tricking. I'm not too sure if this counts as tricking. If you give women a monthly stipend to basically be what on call for you. So you can basically do what he did to little young Miami, where it's like, hey, I need some 2C, jump on a jet and bring me what I've got left in my house. Like, I I'm guessing that's what it means. It's almost like a retainer. Um, but Jesus, this is wild, right? Absolutely wild. Um, it says here, according to Plaintiff Jones, the women who received these payments are Carisha Romika Brownlee, also known as Young Miami, Jade Ramey, also known as Jade, and Daphne Joy um, Cervantes Navarez, also known as Daphne. And Daphne, I think, is the person that Diddy and 50 were beefing over. That's um, 50's baby mother, who then Diddy ended up hooking up with in the end, which is kind of wild in itself, right? You take your enemy's baby mother and you turn her into a sex worker. That's pretty insane. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mad way to get someone back in it. I'm going to take your fucking baby mum and turn her into a prosy. Absolutely wild. Because when I think of sex work, I don't think of like the overall term. The thing I think about is like just a, a high, like an, you know, a fancy term for an escort, basically. Which is basically what he turned Young Miami into, which is wild. Based on the information and belief, they received payment by a wire transfer from Robin Greenhill. It is unclear if they were provided appropriate United States federal tax do documents for these payments or if they independently declare these payments on their taxes. Either way, one absolute wild situation to be in. Again, I'm still perplexed why Diddy couldn't just do this freak shit legitimately um, with consenting adults who didn't mind to get up to all this nonsense and why it had to be you know illegal shit where it had to be kind of at, at the you know at the abuse of others in order for him to get something you know the little the little rod situation also is horrible because he just wanted to for the sounds of it make records he wanted to be able to have the production credits of working on a love album he wanted to have a look he wanted to get his clout up and then it turned into a horror show because they then turned it into like one big sex orgy thing as the album was being put together absolutely heinous absolutely disgusting um let's hope some justice is met off the back of this but you know it's going to be probably a long time before this actually all goes to court anyway in the first place but you can only hope one can only hope